there's not a person in this room today who doubts the love of God. At the same time, there's not a person in this room today who can fully comprehend the love of God. We tell one another, I love you. We say, I love you to the moon and back. We use all kinds of expressions to try to emphasize how deep and true our love really is. But here in Romans chapter 5, we are told the depth of the love of God for mankind. While we were still sinners, God commended, demonstrated, proved his love for us by sending his only son to become the sacrifice for our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3 and verse 16. The love of God is so special that there is a word used to describe the love of God that was not even used until Jesus Christ came into this world. You know that word, agape. We've heard it taught and preached about for years. It's the love of God. That term is never applied to the love relationship of mankind one toward the other. It's used only to describe the love of God, a love that is pure, a love that is unending, a love that is forgiving. The love of God is special. Perhaps there's no book in the Bible, for me at least, that helps me understand and to appreciate and to better comprehend the love of God than the book of Hosea. Hosea was a prophet of God in the northern kingdom. He served for 40 years and he began during the reign of Jeroboam II. The people had pulled away from God. They were worshiping idols. Morality did not exist. And God sent Hosea to call those people back to tell them about their lifestyle and how reprehensible it is in the sight of God. And to make his point in a way that they could understand it and in a way that you and I today can understand it, God told Hosea to do something that we would consider unimaginable. He told Hosea to marry Gomer, who was a prostitute. The Bible teaches us that Gomer was a beautiful woman. Hosea loved her deeply. And she bore him three children. But Gomer went back into her former lifestyle even while she was living in the home of Hosea. She would bring men into Hosea's house in order that she could practice her trade. And here is Hosea, a man of God, who is held up to ridicule and public scorn because of the actions of his wife. 
because he loved her so deeply, he pleaded and pleaded and pleaded that she would give up that lifestyle and would live with him as a faithful wife to rear the children. But rather than doing that, she left Hosea's home. She placed herself under the ownership, if you will, of men who promised her great wealth. Today, the slang for that would be a pimp. Someone to arrange meetings with men for Gomer. She was very proud of what she was doing. And she would bring some of the gifts and show Hosea how she was prospering and what a wonderful life she was enjoying and that she had no intention of ever coming back to Hosea. And all the time, Hosea is pleading for her love. As the years pass, Gomer's beauty begins to fade. She no longer is the favorite of many of the men. And as age degrades the body and her beauty, she found it more and more difficult to practice her trade. Now we have to understand that prostitution was really a way of life during this time. Under Jeroboam II, he had pulled the people farther and farther away from God. And even in religious circles, one of the ways they thanked God, they would provide holy women for the men who would come to serve their gods. It was just an accepted practice. Sometimes men would buy one of these holy women only to discover that it was his wife or perhaps even his daughter. So this is the society that Hosea was in this was how common it was for women like Gomer to be engaged in the activities that they were. Now men, would you and I continue to love Gomer? To continue to plead with her to come back while all the time she is laughing at me holding me up to public ridicule and bragging about the gifts given to her by other men. But Hosea still loved her. There were three ways that people could be sold as slaves during this time. People who were captured if you went into battle and you brought back captives, you were allowed to sell them at the public auction as slaves. If you were born of slaves, then the owner was allowed to sell the children's slaves, the offspring, at the public auction. And the third way was to place yourself up for public auction in order to pay off debts, to have a place that you could live and at least have food to eat and a roof over your head. And we read in the book of Genesis that the price under the Old Testament law for a Hebrew slave was 30 shekels of silver. Gomer 
puts herself on the public auction block. She's no longer beautiful. Men have no interest in her. She has betrayed Hosea multiple times over the years. And now she has hit rock bottom. And so she places herself on the auction block. No one bids on Gomer except Hosea. And he paid the price, the going price, the minimum price for a slave. It was 30 shekels of silver. He gave them 15 shekels of silver and he paid the rest of it in grain. And Bible scholars say that the amount of grain that he offered, it would have taken 15 shekels of silver to buy it. So he bought back Gomer. And when the auctioneer ended, going once, going twice, sold, Hosea stepped forth. Now, why did God put Hosea through that? He wanted the people to understand, you are the prostitute. You are the unfaithful. You are the one who has betrayed your own God. But you know what? I'll buy you back. I still love you. And in spite of the scorn that you directed me, in spite of the idol gods that you have worshipped through the years, in spite of the fact that you have turned your back on me, I still love you. Romans 3.23 says, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death. God would have every right to just cast us off, even as Hosea would have had every right to reject Gomer to stand there in the public auction and belittle her and mock her and remind her of all the things she had done to sin against Hosea and against God. But he didn't. He said, I love you. And he bought her back for 30 shekels. You know what price God paid to buy us back? That's where we started the lesson. God commended his love toward us that while we were sinners, Christ died in order that we could be bought back and have a saving relationship with God Almighty through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. How much does God love you? Think about Hosea. Think about in real time what it would have been like to be married to Gomer and to live through all of the infidelities and all of the rejection. How difficult would it be to still love her and to buy her at public auction. I think the book of Hosea is a powerful statement of how much God loves us. Because we as sinners, we're Gomer. We often turn away from God, reject God, doubt God, refuse to obey God. And God says, I still love you. 
I will forgive you and I will buy you back through the blood of my son. I ask you today, God paying that price, have you taken advantage of that love? Have you understood the depth of the love of Almighty God that he would be so forgiving and even provide the sacrifice for our sins, his only son. I beg you today, please understand how much God loves you, that he provided a way of salvation through the sacrifice of his son. And it's through the blood of Jesus Christ that we can hear that auctioneer going once, going twice, sold to God Almighty who promises a home in heaven. If you have never obeyed the gospel, believing that Jesus is the Son of God, having a faith that would cause you to repent, to turn away from sin, to acknowledge with your mouth what you believe in your heart, that Christ truly is the Savior, the Son of God. Then God says, be buried in water. There the blood of Christ will cleanse you of all sins and we arise from that watery grave a new creature. Gomer, we, all of our sins can be washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. And if we have been washed by the blood, but we have lived a life that is disturbing to us, and we understand that we have not been pleasing to God, Today, would you put yourself on the auction block? Would you allow God to redeem you either for the first time or for ever how many times that we have sinned against God? Please know how much God loves you and take advantage of that love today while together we stand and sing.